We're in section 8.8, .8, systems of linear equations. Okay, the word systems tells me that I'm going to be dealing with more than one equation within a problem, or it, it's called a system. Okay, so in the first slide, um, we're just, uh, actually we're going to skip through that one for now. A system of linear equations, or simply a linear system, consists of two or more linear equations. Remember, a linear equation just forms a straight line. All right, so these are really nice because are they already in slope-intercept? Yeah, they're already in slope-intercept form, so all I have to do is graph them on a graph. All right, I graph them using my slope and my y-intercept. It would be way too much work to set up like tables. Y'all remember setting up the tables with our standard domain set and our custom? We're not going to do any of that. We're just going to use our slope and y-intercept to graph these equations. And here's how I find the solution. The solution is the point where the two lines intersect. You don't have to write this down, but that's what we're looking for. When we graph line A and line B, where do they intersect? At what ordered pair? And it'll be an even ordered pair. You don't have to worry about it being like 3.8, like an X value that's not a whole number. It will be a whole number. All right, so where do the lines intersect? That's going to be my solution. So in example one, I just want to show you an example of, of what it looks like. When I graph these two lines, does everybody see this point of intersection right here? Okay, so right at the point where the lines intersect, and it might not be where the end points are. It might be I have to actually just draw my lines, keep drawing my lines longer to see where it intersects. You'll see more of that in just a minute. But I'm looking for that point. So you see that the ordered pair 1, negative 2 is the solution because that's where they intersect. Is everybody clear on that? Okay. So here's what that means. I graphed it to find my solution, but here's what it means. And you don't necessarily have to do this part of it on your homework. This is kind of the extra step. But it means that this ordered pair, when I plug it back into the original equations, y equals 2x minus 4, and y equals negative 3x plus 1. If it really is a solution to the system, it will make both sides equal in both equations. So let's try it, all right? On the first equation, what was my x value that I said was my solution? 1, what's my y value? Negative 2. So I plug in negative 2 for y, and I plug in 1 for x, all right, and now let's simplify. What's 2 times 1 minus 4? It's negative 2. So negative 2 equals negative 2, and that side checks out. But that doesn't mean that it's true. I have to check the other equation now also. Maybe the second equation won't be, and then the answer is no. All right, so again, let's plug in our values. Negative 2 equals negative 3 times 1 plus 1. All right, so what's negative 3 times 1 plus 1? Negative two. It's negative 2 also. So negative 2 checks out again. So my answer is yes. All right. So again, when you graph it, you don't have to go back and plug it in, but you could. If you had time on a quiz or a test, you could go back and make sure it checks out. Now, I think it's uh, the very first question on your homework assignment tonight is only this piece of it where you're testing to see whether an ordered pair is a solution. So you have to plug it back into both equations, test it, and then say yes or no. Okay? Does that make sense? All right. So example one is showing us how to find the solution on a graph, um, but then this part of it does kind of outline what the first homework question is going to ask you to do to test an ordered pair. Okay. All right, we are... Mm, I'm going to go ahead and switch uh, screens for a minute because I want to stay on example one, but I need, I need another um, system of equations. 
All right, so we're gonna set up this graph. Um, I've got one set up here for you. And we are going to actually graph this, and it's gonna say, um, the instructions would say on a section like this, solve the linear system by graphing. This really is kind of the heart of the lesson. We're actually going to do two of these graphs together. All right, so I need you to get out a sheet of graph paper. We do have to do this on graph paper because the units have to line up perfectly in order for us to see which ordered pair is the solution. All right, so we're gonna set up one graph and we're going to graph two equations on that same graph and see where the lines intersect. So I'm going to go ahead and plot all of my points first before I draw the line through the points. So on the first equation, where would my first point go for that equation? Two. It would go on a y value of two. So I plot my, I plot my point right there on the two. Then from that point, what does the slope tell me I need to do? Up four over one. Please don't forget that that's actually over one. Anytime you have a whole number, it's over one. You don't do zero, okay? That would be an undefined slope, okay? So we've got to go up four over one and plot our point. Then now let's go to the second equation. We plotted our two points for our first equation. Now let's go to the second one. Where does my first point go for the second one? on a value of two again. So same point, I don't need to you know, draw another one on top of it. Then from that point, where do I go? Up one over one. So I plot my other point. Now I need to draw my lines through on that side and through on the other side. All right, so draw my arrows on each end of the line. All right, and now I can clearly see what is the ordered pair that is the solution for this system? Zero two. Zero two. Zero two is the ordered pair that's the solution. That's where the lines intersect. Okay, so what did I do? I graphed each equation using the slope and y-intercept, and then I drew my lines to see what, where they intersect. All right, any questions? Do you guys have that? All right, so now let's do our second graph. Again, this is really important, so I wanted to at least practice two of them. Okay, now on these equations, I don't see any numbers in front of my x. I don't see any numbers in front of my x. You see that on my slope? What does that mean? If there's no number in front of x, what does it mean is there? A one, one over one, two, right? Okay, so it should be 1 over 1. It might be helpful for you to even write that in the equations just as a reminder uh, for yourself. Okay, I've got to remember that, you know, if there's no number there and understood 1 is there. All right, so go ahead and try to do this one on your own. And just as a hint, you are going to need to draw pretty long lines through each of these points in order to see where they intersect. You want your lines as straight as possible so you can see clearly where the solution is. All right, so I'm gonna walk around and kind of check y'all's work. All right, so on the first line, we go down seven. All right, because our y-intercept is negative seven, we go down seven, plot our point. Then because our slope is negative x, that means negative one over one. Okay, so that means I go down one, Oops. Go down one over one. Okay, so now my two points are plotted for my first slope. Now on my second slope, again, I go up to three. I follow my y-intercept first. Then for um, the slope, that's again one over one. So I go up one to the right one. And now I have my four points plotted. And now I need to draw my lines through the points. Now, what we've done before is just a simple line through the points with arrows on each end. But what is the problem with drawing my lines this way? You can't see where they intersect. So you have to draw them longer like this to see where they actually intersect. 
okay? So then make sure you get your arrows on all the ends showing that your solutions continue. And then we can clearly see that at the point where they intersect, what is the ordered pair? Negative, 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 negative seven. No, oh, the okay. X value comes first. Negative five, oh. negative two. Negative five, negative two. I'm gonna rewrite that. Straight, I got negative four. Okay, so Greg did the same thing, um, and that's that's a really good point. Now, I will be lenient somewhat on that. Like, if you know, if you're just a little off, I'm not gonna mark the entire thing wrong. But that's why it's so important to draw your line straight, because if it's curved at all, you're not going to get the right order pair. It's going to intersect. I mean, if, if one of your lines or even both of them are not straight, it's going to intersect, but it's going to intersect in the wrong place. That's why out of all the graphing that we've done this year, it is very important that these graphs are straight lines and graphed right on the grid lines. Okay? All right. Any questions? All right. So moving on. So that's how we graph linear systems. Now let's talk about what I like to call our exceptions to the rules, okay? Now exceptions would be something that looks like this, okay? What do you notice here? And you can look at the graph. What do you notice about these lines? They that they're parallel, okay? But on your homework, it's not going to give you the graph, okay? you have to be able to read the actual equations and know that these lines are going to be parallel. What information in the equations would tell me the lines are going to be parallel? It's the both negative 2x. Yes, the slope. Do you see that the slope is the same in both of the equations? Does everybody see that? So that's the indicator, all right? Now I'm going to go ahead and give you a hint. On one of your homework problems, one of them will either be no solution or infinite solutions. We're about to learn infinite solutions. It's going to be one of them, okay? So if it's no solution, the equations have the exact same slope, all right? Any questions? All right? If it's infinite solutions, all right, we're going to have a scenario that looks like this. In example three, it gives me two equations. Uh, don't pay any attention to the graphs just yet. I, I want you to write these equations side by side on your notes. Don't write them up and down. Write them side by side. All right? And what do we know, okay, if it says solve the linear system by graphing, and it gives us these two equations, can I graph it right now as it is? What needs to happen to these equations before I can graph it? Maybe function form? Function form or what we call slope-intercept form, right? But it's the same thing. Okay, so what I want you to do is write these equations side by side and get them in slope intercept form. All right, again, little reminder, what do we know? What number is understood in front of the Y? One. A one. I would probably go ahead and write that. That will help you when you're solving. All right, just to have that little reminder. All right, so again, equations side by side and go ahead and get both of these equations in slope intercept form. All right, so... Um, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, let me actually go over and start a fresh screen. Okay, infinitely many solutions. So on the first one, we have 2x minus y equals negative 3. On the second one, we have negative 4x plus 2y equals 6. All right, so on both of them, we have to solve for y. Did you subtract 2x first? Okay, so negative y equals negative 2x minus 3. Now what do I have to do to get y by itself? It's not by itself yet. You have to divide, divide, by, negative one. divide by negative 1. That's why I suggested that you write the negative 1 in front of y. All right, so now y equals positive 2x plus 3. Okay, now on the second one, what do I have to do first? Nope. Add 4x. Add 4x. 2y equals 4x plus 6. Divide everything by 2. Okay. And y equals 2x. Whoops. 2x plus 3. So what do you know now about both of these equations? 
they're the exact same equation. So most of the time, like on a quiz or a test, it's not going to look like at the beginning, did this look like it was going to be the same equation? No. no, but once we got them in slope intercept form and everything reduced, now it's obvious to us this is the exact same equation. So same y-intercept, same slope, same everything. On the graph, same line. So what I'm going to say about this, this system is that there are infinite solutions, right? It intersects at an infinite number of points. On every point, it intersects. If it's true about one equation, it's going to be true about the other equation. You can make up any ordered pair. 2 comma 1. 5 comma negative 4. It doesn't matter. And you can plug them in even to these original equations, and they will always check out. Are you making that connection? Test the ordered pair. Come up with any ordered pair. Okay? Plug them into these equations. They will equal out. All right? It'll, it'll work out. All right. If you understand that, that is everything you need to know for Section 8.8. .8.